Welcome back. This is Lesson 6 for How to Compose Music 101, brought to you by artofcomposing.com. Today's lesson is a continuation on the last lesson, so we're going to be covering more topics about harmony. Specifically, you're going to learn about the different types of harmonic progressions and when and how to use them, how to use modal mixture to add variety to your music, and how to use harmonic sequences. So let's jump right into harmonic progressions. Make sure you watch the previous lessons on harmony because you may get a little lost without them. Learning about functional harmony is a big step for any composer. Just knowing chords doesn't get you very far. You need to know how they work. But chords operate differently in different situations. This is what this lesson is all about. So what are harmonic progressions? Progressions are basically a way of organizing the chords into something meaningful. They are a series of chords that serve a purpose. We can classify the harmonic progressions into three broad categories. These categories are prolongation, cadential, and sequential. As stated in classical form by William Kaplan, a prolongation progression extends in time in individual harmony. What does that mean? Basically, it means that you can have one harmony as the main functioning harmony, but you can put in other chords in the middle to break up the monotony. Listen to this example. Kind of boring, right? Now listen to this example where we use prolongation progressions by adding extra chords in between. To qualify as a prolongation progression, a harmony must have a strong bond with the harmony that it is prolonging. This can either be through chord function, for example, tonic to dominant, back to tonic, or it can be through counterpoint, for example, stepwise motion in the melody or the bass. There are many different prolongation progressions, but they basically fall into three different types. The first type is pedal points, in which the root of the prolonged harmony is maintained in the bass throughout the progression. Over the pedal point, different harmonies are played, but because the pedal point maintains the root of the prolonged harmony, it overrides the other harmonies in importance. A second type of prolongation is using neighboring chords, where the prolonged harmony is maintained in the same inversion, like root to root. Another one is passing chords, where the prolonged harmony changes to a different inversion. And finally, substitute chords, where you can replace the original harmony with another harmony that has the same function, for example, 1 and 6. The next type of harmonic progression is cadential. Now this shouldn't be shocking to anybody by now because we've talked about cadences a few times. There are two main types of cadential progressions, the authentic cadential progression and the half cadential progression. The basic premise of an authentic cadential progression is that it confirms a key. To do this, it must contain the dominant and the tonic chords in root position. This becomes especially important when you want to confirm a new key after a modulation or in a subordinate theme. The complete authentic cadential progression has an initial tonic, a predominant, a dominant, and then a final tonic. If it is missing the initial tonic or predominant, it is considered an incomplete cadential progression. Finally, the note that the melody ends on is also very important. If the final note is the first scale degree, we call it a perfect authentic cadence. If the final note is on the third or fifth scale degrees, we call it an imperfect authentic cadence. Listen to these examples. A half cadence or half cadential progression differs in that the goal is the dominant rather than the tonic. It is normal for the half cadence to resolve in the following phrase back to tonic, but because it must be the point of stability for the phrase, 
it has to be a root position triad. This means no inversions and no added seventh. The predominant harmony comes in many different types. This goes for authentic progressions as well. You can have the standard 2-6 to 5. Four to five or four six to five, you can also have applied dominance modal mixture And then there's also a class of augmented sixth chords called Italian sixth, German sixth, and French sixth. I won't get into the augmented sixth chords today, but I am going to talk about modal mixture in just a little bit. The final type of progression we're going to talk about is the sequential progression. Sequential progressions are special relative to functional harmonic progressions because they are based on interval patterns between voices and not on chord function. This gives them two unique capabilities. First, they can go on indefinitely. This doesn't mean that you should use a sequence forever, but they are great for bridging sections in music, for instance during a transition. Listen to this example. Because they are based on interval patterns and not function, they can also supersede harmonic function. There are six groups of sequential progressions categorized by ascending or descending root movement. Descending fifths or ascending fourths, ascending fifths, descending thirds, ascending thirds, descending seconds, and ascending seconds. Sequential progressions tend to start on a chord that has a function, for instance predominant, and then it's linked through the interval patterns to the next functional chord, for instance, dominant. The descending fifths progression is the most common. This is also known as the circle of fifths. This has the strongest harmonic strength because its movement mirrors the dominant to tonic relationship. The next harmonic progression is the ascending fifth. This is much less common Normally it is heard moving to 6 and then going to the predominant harmony. The descending third progression is very common on its own and also frequently has passing chords between the thirds. The ascending third is the least common it also has a version with passing chords. Descending seconds are also relatively uncommon. Ascending seconds are normally found in first inversion. Below this video you'll find examples of many different sequential progressions. Finally, I would like to talk about chromatic harmony just a little bit. If you remember from the previous lesson, you had a chart. The great thing about this chart is it allows you to use it for plain diatonic harmony and also for mixing it up with chromatic harmony. It does this because chord functions are generally interchangeable between major and minor. Some of the most common are the minor predominant in a major progression. This can be done through the use of the two diminished six or the minor four chords. It is also very common to mix in the flat six chord with your major harmonies.
If you are in a minor key, it is not that uncommon to end in a major tonic. This is also known as the Picardy third. Another way to have chromatic harmony is applied dominance. An applied dominant is pretty easy to figure out. Just look at a chord as if it were the key unto itself. Ask yourself, if this were the tonic, what would be its dominant or fifth scale degree? For instance, if we are in C major and you have an E minor chord, then its applied dominant would be a B7 chord. This is because it is the fifth of E minor. You can do this for just about any chord in a piece. It is a great way not only to add harmonic interest, but also to modulate. That should do it for today. Below this video, you'll find additional resources for all the subjects discussed in this video. If you found this video on YouTube or you got the link from a friend and you want to have access to the complete course, go to How to Compose Music 101 and sign up.